back again. Okay, second half of this stream today. I um, <clears throat> probably might be more than it might be a third half. We'll see. <coughs> but uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back. Actually, I th thought I wouldn't come back and finish up the um, claim AV scan. You know, deleting files on the video. But I thought, well, probably I had a feeling. Well, there'll probably be something I really want to show, and if I don't have the video going, I can't show it. So I'm just gonna finish up what I was where I left off. And uh, then I'll then I'll go to the IBM um, over here and uh, go back to work on replacing that fan on that CPU cooler uh, and dealing with the noises that that thing is making. So let's see. Where's my desktop? Let's check my file. Okay, now I'll close this app. I don't need it. Go to Cam Two. And get over on the other machine. Let's see. Oh, yeah, let's check our audio. We'll all switch to the other machine first. There we go. Well, I had a feeling that you can kind of feel that that button on the KVM switch didn't fully come back out. And sure enough, it hadn't. You could see the screen, but the mouse wasn't working. <clears throat> okay, so um, now I see it. It's been long enough that it shows up. Well, now it went away. So, okay, so I got sound and everything. So, uh, <clears throat> since I'm just doing the same thing for longer periods of time, I'm not switching around. I'll leave it. Okay, so oh yeah, I was on. I was manually going through the drive. I've already gone through. Um, Okay, it started up here at the top. Of course, you can't see it good anyway, but uh, I've already gone through all of the results and everything. And what it turns out, and I'm still double-checking that, but what it turns out is that uh, there's a lot of duplicate entries of the same file in the same directory. But I don't know why it does that. It doesn't always do that, but it does it sometimes. And so one would say I could quarantine it. The next one, it wouldn't let me. And... Uh, and if you're new to Clam AV, well, you can't see it, uh, which I can make. I can't do a desktop video in this situation. I have to just point my cameras, and they're not good at the screen. But Clam AV, K L A M A V, that is the GUI interface I'm using. Clam AV, C L A M A V, is the virus scanner, that, which is really a command line program, a term, you know, a CLI program. <coughs> and uh, now it's bugging me that my preview's not playing. Feel like I'm not sure if things are working, so I'll let it play for a little while. Um, so it um, it does some odd things sometimes. It's a good scanner. It's the only one that'll run in Linux operating system, and that's what I'm doing. I'm running um, Fedora. I'm running Fedora 28 Live Security, uh, which you know is all about security and penetration testing stuff like that. Pen testing, they call it. But it doesn't have Clam AV on it, but you can, uh, you know, you can install anything you want as long as you don't fill up your live system, which is about 650 megabytes. When you, uh, that's like virtual drive, you know, <clears throat> it's in your RAM. And of course, if your RAM and your processor can handle doing that, mostly your RAM uh, processors, most of them are going to <laughs> anything from a P4 up, Pentium 4 up. So, um, <clears throat> two gig of RAM, you can, you could probably do this. I've done it. Uh, let's see, I did it on. Uh, I'm sure I did it at least once or twice on a one gig of RAM system, and it, it all worked until it got about halfway through the scan and then locked up. Scan and then locked up. Now this one ran ten days, night and day, because my uh, it's a slow scanner, but it's a thorough scanner. But it was scanning my Seagate backup USB drive that's plugged into this system, and I am only doing uh, this this drive. Let's see. No, this drive will do USB 3.0, but and two won't do one. I don't think. Uh, but the system doesn't have 3.0 ports on it. You know, it just has two. <clears throat> so uh, it was, uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, this well, this motherboard was bought after 3.0 came out. Wasn't it? There could be a 3.0 port on it. Now, whether or not I plugged into it or not, because I did plug in, usually at this time is the age of this AS Rock motherboard. Just dawned on me, the, uh, they were out, and there might be one or two on it, 
I just plugged into one of the ports, the one that looked like it wouldn't, uh, if I b- bumped the computer into the wall, sc- scooting it in and out, that I wouldn't break it as easy, or if a cable got hung on another cable or something. Anyway, because of the way the case is mounted. And I showed, I actually showed a video of me doing that. But I don't think it has 2.0, but it, uh, 3.0, but it might. But anyway, I think I'm scanning in 2.0 mode, but which is what, you're probably going to get for, uh, what's the max, 450, 500 megabits per second in 2.0. So I don't know what it is in 3. I didn't wish I'd have thought of that. Could have, could have cut it in half. I heard not in half, maybe, but three quarters of time or something. Uh, if there was an option. So anyway, um, it took ten days and however many nights. This is the tenth day, and it finally got through. When I, when I got up this morning, it was done. It, I don't know exactly when it quit, when it finished. But I, you know the start date. It's up here in the tab of the scan window, but the finish date got it done. So anyway, I have gone in the previous video. I went through. And I just took groups. I took them by. I've got it organized. You can organize your window by the name of the file or by the uh, name of problem found or by status. That's what you, what your options are. And I go by name of problem because that organizes them uh, in easy way for me to figure uh, see what's what and what I really want to delete. And, it, well, and, and see, these are all in different, well, some of them are in the same folders. and actually duplicate entries, but some of them are in different places and different backups. This is just a backup drive. That's what it is. Well, but the, there's also the Fedora 27 system on here. I don't think it pulled up anything off of that system. I'll look. Uh, and, well, it scanned the live uh, live user, too. It, oh, live user Seagate backup drive. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, well, I'll see if it scanned. Uh, uh, <coughs> it may have scanned that system. I think it did because, yeah, user lib firmware. That would be from the hard drive on the system, the Fedora 27 system. But where everything came up, which is what I expected is a lot of these old backups and email backups. And the Firefox cache is where some of the, the, the only place, I think, that the sure enough uh, malware exploits and stuff, uh, they were in. Well, actually, a few of them were in some old documents. Yeah, PDF exploit. Okay. And so, yeah, I went in. Anybody, anything that said uh, exploit, anything like that, I deleted it. Uh the only thing I was confirming about now is uh, is the second entry. It looks, at, you know, my eyes, I just can't compare two long lines like that. Uh, I, I can do my best, but I'll probably miss something in the middle if there was just one little thing different, one little letter or name, word or whatever different, because my eyes swap letters and numbers in the first place. And uh, left to right and up to down, like from this line to that line to, you know, just all kinds of crazy things. So I have, I'm just not good at that sort of thing. So um, they look, uh, if I kind of stay back and just look at them as, as like together, they look like the same thing. I don't know how to explain that. Sort of like the way you look at images and see if they're the same image, you know, kind of look at two lines that way. Sometimes it even helps to do that, to highlight them both. And they look like the same thing, and uh, but one quarantine and the other one can't. And usually that means, and I went through that in the other video, usually that means that file's already in quarantine and you can't have duplicate files in there. Uh, unless, you're, of course, you're, your drive is full, full or something. And uh, so, uh, but you can empty the quarantine. But it was acting crazy. Well, uh, I can't explain it very well, but I, di- I did as I was doing it. So it was, if you're interested in the, how to get around some really strange quirks in Clam AV, look at my previous video. I'm just going to finish up here, but uh, what I did do, I'll say right here, you, one of the things you do is you go into the quarantine file and manually delete the ones that you can't. So you couldn't get, uh, depending on what was going on, you couldn't get it to show up even by hitting, you have to hit refresh anyway and claim maybe to get it to show what's in there. And the, see, it tells you where it is right there. Home live user dot claim maybe quarantine. That tells you where to go. To, and anyway, I had to manually delete oh, most of them. So now I'm just making sure that there aren't any left behind. So I'm actually going to those folders. You can't right-click and copy the folder address or anything. You just can either quarantine or search for them in this virus uh, search tool, but I wouldn't use that because it'll lock up the system. What it'll do. If you click on that virus browser window, it'll lock up the system, so I wouldn't use those right-click search tools. I think it goes straight to that window to do the search. It's kind of like a web browser built into Clam AV, but it's, uh, I don't know what it is. It uses, 
I don't care what says. I maybe this is an eight core with an eight gig of RAM, but it is running straight out of memory. You know, well, I mean, there may be. Let's see. I think it's all running in memory. I don't think any of it's. I don't think it saves any. It might be using the uh, <clears throat> swap file on the hard drive. It might be using the the swap drive. There's a swap partition on your Linux hard drives, and it may be using that. But other than that, it's not writing things to the hard drive. So. <clears throat> Um, so I did some, I did the ones that were really important, the ones that are just heuristics encrypted zips, heuristic scan encrypted zips, or heuristic, heuristics broken executables. Those are, most of those are when, are Linux files that this, this, uh, clam AV thinks might, might be a problem, but it doesn't know for sure because it's really looking at, for Windows files that are infected. And well, you know, if you have an exe file or MSI file, that's shows up as a broken executable they usually are infected that's been my experience so uh but in linux files all your most of your lot of your system files there's nothing wrong with them will always always show up that way <coughs> so uh <coughs> if it didn't say like up at the top there's some that are uh and android malware because i have some android backups for my phones and the email exploit those are the ones and and it's the same exact ones well there's a couple of different ones but there's a whole bunch of entries of the same exact malware agent and it was the same files in different places and but there's also the double and triple entries in here for some reason of the same address and everything so i'm trying to sift through that so this one's already been quarantined so i think it will not be there when i go to that uh, folder but i want to i want to uh, make sure because this this is an exploit PDF exploit Talos can with a number on the end. And as far as I can tell, the number is the same as the one right above it. So actually, there's a whole bunch of them. That's that same name and the same number. But they do, some of them, they are in different locations though. But see, one will quarantine, one wouldn't. Uh, so these two look like it's duplicate entries of the same file, same location. But I want to make sure. So, whoops. So I got to go to backup, Thetas. Hot Rock PC, that's my mom's PC, that was the name we gave it. C8, okay, Zeta's Hot Rock PC. And it's really hard for me to get remember that. I can't remember any, more than about a wor few words at a time. Okay, FileZilla folder. I've been in here a while ago, so I know where this is talking about. And uh, I did two, there's two separate backups in there. Uh, full backups of her home, her Fedora 14 system. That I did with Lucky Backup. That I did with FileZilla over the network, and then I real and then I realized all of the all of the dates are going to be the same. It completely ruins your backup. You can't can't sync files that way because they all 11, 11, 17. It ruins everything. Um, I, I don't know how to. I, I don't want to go into details because uh, I can't think straight enough. But anyway, if you've done a lot of backing up or any backing up, you probably know the fall dates need to stay accurate and not be changed of the last change in, the, you know, the last change in the file date and all that sort of stuff. So uh, anyway, it really ruins your thinking when you're backing up. Uh, so, um, these are, so these are really not that important, but I just want to make, I'm just trying to confirm in that folder, trying to confirm that my, my idea, my theory is that they are duplicates. So, uh, documents, see, FileZilla backup, documents, House and River, whatever, documents. Oh, I went into downloads. That's why. Why does that not? Went in the wrong folder. I've been having trouble in uh, lately of doing that. I'm trying to click on a. Trying to click on something and hitting the wrong line. I guess that's part of the way my eyes are messed up. I was blaming it on these new systems. There's something different about it, but it doesn't look any different. Door 28. <coughs> it does look like I may make my text a little bigger, and I think that helps, And but it's probably smaller than what I'm used to. But um, let's see. Whoops. Okay, tactics. Tarrant County. Oh. I think that's the file name. Yeah, it's a long file name. Okay. Tarrant County so and so PDF. 
I don't think there is a. Oh, that one is okay. That one says. Uh, okay, so that file is not there. Yeah, like I, then that's what I'm trying to confirm. That file is not there because it's a duplicate entry and I already deleted it. It already it actually the 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 first if you see what I've been doing, which normally you can just do that. Like what I was doing is like all four of those are the same exploit, and I, and I just right click and say quarantine, and but it kept saying can't do it, and I won't read that list again. But the two of them are already done, so. Um, I just did another one, did I? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I can look in my, uh, I have to look in my, I have to go all the way back to, well, actually, let's get it out of the, let's get it out of the, uh, we can copy that, that address, and then, you, and, and then this is through our file manager, uh, which is my second favorite file manager, so you can write, paste it in and go there, so it's empty, and you can refresh it and make sure, so it's, it's not, you know, there's no, I didn't just quarantine anything else. I've been doing and doing and doing it. I didn't think I'd be able to, <clears throat> but you never know. I could have forgot to click on one of them, you know. Anyway, um, okay. So those folders are not folders I would even really copy back from anyway. And we're probably going to delete that whole backup once I'm done rebuilding her system. But I'm not going to do it till I'm sure I'm not any files in there I need. But then, uh, yeah, the regular Theta folder backup, that's the one I really want to make sure that it's not in there. So let's go back to the Seagate drive, I guess. It's like this. Go this way. It would be nice if I could read that whole word. Theta instead of <coughs> Theta FileZilla. And then where else are we going? Documents. Theta Documents. Okay. House and ropes, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now. <clears throat> Text. Yeah, it's not there. There's one similar file that starts out similar, but that's a different file. And it didn't come up as a bad file okay so um, and I'll just to show I can't yeah I can't quarantine it okay so uh, what's this oh another entry of the same file I think looks like the same file yeah so these are these are double see that's a one I d deleted the one of them, one of the entries, and so then it's actually the same file again. I think it's in the same folder. Yeah, they'd be the same folder. So the hard thing is it looks different. You know, the address looks longer. Oh, this is a different place. So let's go to this other place and make sure it's not in there. It's a different address. So normally, even if it's the same file, if it's in a different address, it will not you know, it'll deal with it for you like it should. So, uh, yeah, there's some some weird problems that you have with this scanner sometimes. Okay, now this is C oh, okay, Seagate Expansion Drive Documents, my main documents folder, but there's a folder for mom. Okay. I did that at some point. Instead of a separate whole backup of her system, documents, right? Yeah, documents mom <clears throat> sometimes I forget yeah I've got several folders that say mom in there <coughs> documents mom theta docs oh. I'm not seeing those are in alphabetical order <coughs> <coughs> There it is. I just saw it. But I'm going to type for it. There we go. Now, there's no other folder like that. If I type it, it will show me whether or not there's any other folders with similar names. 
Yeah, that's that's a good thing. I'm used to that in Crusader, the twin panel foam matters that I like, but Thunder, uh, Thunar will do that too. So, all right, now what am I looking for? House. Okay. There it is. Okay. Now then, I think I already see. I think it's the same file name. Yeah, so <clears throat> that file, no matter where it was, and even though there's more than one entry, but it's gone. It's already been deleted. Now, what? How did it delete it from a different folder, though? Okay, that's mom's backups. That's a different folder. Oh, it's it's there again, right under it. Okay, so it's it's I don't know it, when I would select more than one at a time, it would delete one or the other. It almost seems randomly. It wouldn't always delete the one on the top, you know, in this list. <clears throat> so the one underneath it was the same file in the same folder, and it deleted it. So that double entry. Okay, so these ones that are sure enough exploits and all that, I want to make darn sure they're gone. And then there was some in uh, the cache folders. Which I'm not going to be copying cash back, but not on purpose anyway. But uh, so let's check this other one that shows to be loose. Uh, backup theta dot PC dot cash. Okay, this is one I didn't even realize. Now I've got to go back. I, I'm not going in the order of folders because I'm just going down that list because that's <laughs> kind of the only way I can keep it. Do it. With my backup, whoops. Well, now where am I? Backup theta hot rod PC theta. I might be closer to where I accidentally I was hitting the, using the keyboard accidentally. Backup theta hot rod PC theta dot cache. I want dot cache. Dot dot cash okay now what do I want <coughs> I want Google Chrome okay cash again I knew it was it's a cache of cash <laughs> see there's all kinds of stuff in there there's videos that have been played shockwave flash file they look like a video but it could be just ads and stuff but this is Chrome cache you know browsing cache is what it is all right, now it's uh, F underscore zero 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 F O. Or I think they're all O's. These are the ones that are just impossible for me to. I can't even really see them. F underscore one. I can't count those zeros are too tiny. Let's see if I can go by the last couple of letters. F O. C D E F. Either one of F O or F E to F D to F C F A B C D E. Now there's no O or zero. I'm not sure which one it was. If I could copy and paste, I'd find it right away. Find out whether or not it's there right away. I don't believe it's there though. Um because it is in alphabetical order, so, and they all F underscore zero zero, so many zeros. Let me see if there's any way I can. F underscore one, two, three, four, five zeros. Okay, F, now the, the, the search, one, two, three, four, five, F, zero. Okay, I was good until I hit the zero there. So, zero or, oh, yeah, it's a, those are zeros. Figured that part out. So, yeah, there is no F. Uh, I can't, my, my arrow keys won't let it go up and down. Uh, I guess if I put A, it works, right? Should. 
doesn't move, but I know there's an A there. F B. Maybe there's a different amount of zeros. It should go to the next one. It just stays on the F and won't move. Huh. Yeah, those have less zeros, I think. Yeah, because they're shorter. That's what it is. So, well, I lost all what I typed. Okay, so the file's not there. I failed reasonable JavaScript. Makes you wonder what all this stuff is. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, this, this browser cache doesn't need to be there anyway. So, well, I'm not going to do it in here because I don't know how long it would take. I tried deleting all the browser cache when, on the drive when I had it plugged into my... I was in a video, I think, and I had it plugged into my, you know, Lenovo i5 like normal. Well, that's where I keep it. And uh, <coughs> it was going to take take forever, so I stopped it. But, yeah, all the all the browser cache files, I didn't know where uh, Chrome kept their browser cache. Now I do. And I, <coughs> I mean, I won't remember it. I'm going to screenshot this stuff. But I'm going to start from the top. Okay, so I've, yeah, everything that's couldn't showed up that couldn't be deleted it's just simply because it's a duplicate entry that's what i wanted to make sure of so i'm going to just in order so it's going to have to be a bunch of screenshots so i'm just gonna i'm gonna you know this will help me in the in the future when i look back through this and if i decide to do a video where uh whoops that didn't work clicked on it and it jumped so now I don't know where I was I think there is something not working right because I clicked in the right place but it jumped to another place so I won't click until I'm ready to I don't know maybe if I click right on one of the words or something. yeah it didn't jump that time so uh, I'll just click I'll do my screenshot first it doesn't really matter I just whatever I think I ought to do this way I can tell when I'm reading through it. It's kind of like putting a page number in it, you know. Or a bookmark, I guess you could say a bookmark. You see, it's going to be quite a few. Well, there was 332 virus slash problems found. And I had to sift through all of it. But, I mean, it's worth it uh, to be get your get your drive this is my backup drive so it's been needing to be scanned for a long time because i know that <clears throat> uh well from years and years i still download for, uh, windows i think i just did a double screenshot i still download windows apps thinking i'm going to try them out and uh sometimes i do but like one time i decided okay i'm going to try out webcam apps on my windows 7 on my dell 1525 laptop and I think, actually, I started out, uh, normally what I do in Windows is if I'm going to install an app, I uh, right-click and scan it with mal uh, Malwarebytes and Clam AV, both, or at least one of them. And uh, I forgot, I think, and just started installing, and Clam AV popped up. And uh, <clears throat> said, this is bad, but we cleaned it up for you. You know, it's okay, don't worry. But... I know better than to just trust one scanner, so I started scanning and uh, ended up finding Trojans all over. I had three Windows 7 systems, you know, on the same network here, and I ended up have, having stuff, some of the same stuff on all of them. So I think it was a really bad one, you know, that it was a network, it was a worm, a network crawler, you know, and... Uh, I got to turn them scanning those things. I finally just brief. Well, I, one of my so I went ahead and scanned it ten times until I got it to finally come up clean. Without you know, I, I'm I'm not clean until I do a scan that that does not come up with anything. If you do, I use ten different uh, rescue systems because each one will find a little bit different something. Now to be super thorough, you probably need to scan with them all again, but uh, there ain't enough time in the world to do that. So once it comes up clean. And it's all kind of random anyway. I mean, which one do you use first? Which one will find what, you know, and won't find the other? So I just use the ones I like the best first <clears throat> and uh, keep going. I had to find some more because I really only knew of about five scanners. You know, and I had to find more. <clears throat> and uh, 
kept going. And I remember I was like 10 scans before it finally didn't show anything on one of them. Sometimes I will use the same one again because that's another way to confirm. I've been doing that a lot. On these Fedora systems, there's only got, I've only got uh, Clam AV. Okay, Fedora can, is the only system I know of that can mount the Fedora LVMs automatically anyway. You can do it. You can mount them in the command line like in the Bane, I think. I know you can do it in, let's see, I guess I've done it in the Bane once or twice, but it's a real pain. I can't remember how to do it. And Fedora just does it automatically. So if you're going to use Clam AV anyway, you might as well boot to a live Fedora system and scan with it. Um, Bid Defender is my other one that I like the, uh, uh, now a lot because it's really fast and it seems to be as efficient as any of the others. Runs on a Linux, it runs on Gen 2 Linux. I figured that out recently, and uh, it's a live system and it's real. It's very automatic, but it does stop at the end and let you pick what you want to get rid of, like I'm doing here. Uh, and it was really fast because I did this drive with it. Uh, I still can't remember which machine it was either the Dell 6000 laptop or my Lenovo i5 I had it plugged into. And I believe it did it in 16 hours instead of 10 days. Or no, I think it did it in uh, three days, three and a half, two and a, two and a half days and three, two nights or something. I counted it up, yeah. I scanned something that took 16 hours. I guess that was the Dell lap, laptop, the 1525 laptop. I scanned it with Clam AV and it took 16 hours, I think. But anyway, uh, bit, what I'm trying to say is the, the Gen 2 and bit, the Bit Defender will automatically mount all Windows drives and it'll mount the main uh, file systems because it uses ext4 doesn't use the lvms so but it can't mount lvms not automatically and with bid defender it's all automatic anyway i don't know i think if you tried to pause it while it, it first it, it downloads the newest version of bid defender then it downloads the, the virus definitions and then it goes to scan <laughs> in and all automatically uh, maybe if you were really sitting there paying attention you might be able to pause it and like hand mount you know a, 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 another LVM or something but that'd be pretty hard so um, I do remember I've stopped it and changed the settings before it scanned but you the only way I know how to do it is to pot uh, it just a minute that it gets opened up, gets booted, it starts its update process. So you have to like catch it right before it starts scanning. Other or cancel the scan, change your settings, and then restart the scan. You might can do that, but that part's the only thing that's a real pain about Bit Defender. But anyway, so the only thing I have to scan my Fedora file systems is Clam AV. So I've used it more than once on the same system, but really you want to diversify your scanners because one will always find something that the other one don't. always has and still does for, since the last 20 years I've been doing computers you know so uh, uh, we I think I'm done I think it's I think my backup drive is clean enough and this system oh yeah this system thought I would go every time I try to get that thing to go where I want it to I don't want to Okay, so now if I order it, you know, by the name of the file, which always puts the folders in the same order, boot VM, VM LINUZ4, that's the Linux kernel. That's two Linux kernels. It actually looks like the same kernel, but it says here, it, it, it says name of problem found, heuristics broken, it's executable. Heuristics is a type of scan, which type scans. I, I've read about it, and I used to kind of have, I could almost explain what it is, but now I can't remember. Um, it just stands, scans for signs inside of the file that it could be something wrong with it, basically, is what I get out of it. But uh, let me go, I'm going to reload my preview. When the machine went to sleep over there, I thought, hmm, maybe I haven't checked my preview in a while. So then lib firmware, so that's all on the Fedora 27 hard drive, not on my backup drive. And then run uh, INET frames, those are all... Not, some of them they say uh, heuristics encrypted zip uh, and some of them they say broken executable they're not really broken it's just that Clam AV doesn't know that they're Linux files it just looks broken to them because it's really the way I gather it it's really looking for broken Windows files you know, which if they're broken they probably are infected um, <coughs> 
And if it's or if it's a zip file, you can use zip files on Windows or Linux, but if it's a zip file, it could very well be infected. So like, well, this was uh, MPI tool pack plus Cloverlight, which is web uh, player what Microsoft's you know like Flash and Java this is Microsoft's thing and uh, so I deleted it because I don't really need it it's really not too, on too many websites anymore anyway at some point I needed it I guess and I got it uh, but I don't need I don't need it anymore I haven't haven't used it in a long time so uh, if I needed it I could download it again and uh, it's just like a browser add-in type thing so anyway, uh, and then the rest are all on my Seagate expansion drive. That will that was on my Seagate expansion drive, but I did delete it. And so then I'm going all the way down Seagate expansion drive, and then back to user lib firmware, run media. I don't know why it's in. Uh, oh wait, you got to pay attention. <laughs> run media Seagate expansion drive. Okay, so user lib, uh, lib firmware. I don't know why those are in that order. Why? Because I saw some user folders up higher. Why are they down here? I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird how. And it's even weirder when you try to watch the scan and guess where, where it's been and where it's going next. It just seems to jump all around between your hard drive and, in this case, with a USB hard drive, hard drive plugged in. Uh, I, I never had a clue of how far it was from being finished, not until, you know, not even yesterday or last night or whatever, because I didn't know where it was in there. Never have been able to figure that out. Anyway, all the rest are in user lib, and uh, that's on the Fedora 27 system, because all, all the, you know, well, I don't know how long they've been. I guess, I don't know how long, but don't remember any further back in the last few years, but user lib's one of the, every Fedora system's going to have user lib. Well, I think all the domain systems will. But uh, oh, I guess there wasn't a user lib up there in, in this order. Okay, so it was just me thinking that. It's run. Well, see, there's run media Seagate, but there's run INET frames too. Libsys, Libsys boot. Okay, so it, I guess that now it really is in the alphabetical order. I thought it wasn't for a minute there. But anyway. <coughs> I've really, really went through it, and everything that's, that it couldn't, I have had times when it couldn't delete something, and I had to go to that folder and manually delete it. But in this case, there are duplicate reports. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't make much sense to me that it would do that, but it does sometimes. Not always. The, the claim may be. But you duplicate reports from the same file in the same folder. So, of course, you can only delete it once. And that really makes it hang up, though. The quarantine won't work. When you select a couple, like when you when you say, okay, I want, like what I was doing, I'd say, okay, I want, uh, I want all these with the same name, and then I would right-click, quarantine selected, and I'll get this message every, on some of them and others, it would delete it. And, of course, it's just going to keep only giving that message. The message changed a little bit, but... Uh, uh, <clears throat> so the ones that still say loose are actually the duplicates that are not, they're actually not there. And, but when you do it that way, normally you always do have, most of the time you have to hit refresh. Sometimes you'll look and it'll be there, but to get the quarantine to show what's in there. But when you do it the way I just did it, it won't work. And so then you've got to go to manually go to the quarantine folder to see what's in it. So, and I'll do that again, copy. You can copy it, the address right out of there, and, and then through NAR, you can just paste it in there. I'm using Control V, hit Enter, and it's empty. <clears throat> and that's home uh, live user dot claim AV quarantine. And so I manually deleted everything that went in there that didn't show up. But if you were to do one line at a time, then it would. It, I figured out today that in this case they were showing up when you'd refresh, and. Uh, like I'll just do those same folders again. It's not going to do anything one way or the other. I'm not not going to read out those messages I did it in the past few years. But um, nothing in there. Hit refresh in there. Still nothing in there. So um, I mean, nothing would show up even though it's there. I learned that. 
See, they'd be in the quarantine folder, but they're not actually deleted from the drive. And I found them later. That's what happened is I was going around through my system, and it would be, you know, home don dot claim AV, and I found it full of junk. I was like, what the heck? I don't want all that on my system, you know. And so I learned over the years how to deal with that problem at claim AV. I thought it had been fixed because I hadn't been seeing it in a while, long while. But... Uh, <clears throat> evidently it's I don't know it's still that way so what did I do oh let's if anything really did get delete uh, you know deleted I'm not paying attention it's still really I'm just doing it uh, it would show up so um, after you scan go through and read everything figure out uh, my rule is if it says malware Trojan or anything like that I'm gonna delete it pretty much no matter what, no matter where it is. Um, if it says heuristics broken executable, I'm going to executable. I'm going to figure it out whether or not I think I'm, it's you know risky or I need the file. <clears throat> if I don't need it, I might as well delete it anyway. You know, uh, and if it's encrypted zip, uh, you got to figure that out. Generally, that is going to usually well, it's not always, but usually it's a personal file. A lot of uh, Anything, a lot of files that are made to read in Adobe Acrobat Reader will be encrypted, and there's nothing wrong with them. And for instance, like your, if you do like TurboTax, your income tax reports will be encrypted, and those should be, you know, they should be okay. But encrypted files, the reason they can be dangerous is because that's one of the oldest tricks that viruses do is they encrypt a file so that it can't be read by a virus scanner inside of it, and so the virus can hide in there. That's why it can be a dangerous thing. And so, uh, um, and PDFs are really vulnerable too to getting getting infected, getting worms and viruses crawling in them. So, uh, if your system is relatively clean, then you, you probably don't, that's why you got to say, okay, where did I get that file? How long have I had that file? If my system's really right, ramp it with infections and maybe maybe if you've had this file forever maybe it got infected you know um <clears throat> it's just it's just not a simple thing to truly clean up a system i've done it i went i went the extra miles and miles and done it many times and i've done the short i've done it the shortcuts and learned the hard way that you you never were clean you know and uh because I've always kept backups, and that keeping backups is what where I learned that. Because you know, it, it takes like here. You, uh, this is probably the absolute longest I've ever scanned a drive to clean to, you know, let it scan day and night, ten days. And uh, because I really, really needed to make wanted to make sure this was clean since I'm building three new systems, and I don't want them getting infected again. <coughs> uh, well, they weren't actually infected, but that. Adware browser, add-on browser.com um, malware they served up from the safe web with vi safer web with virus total add-on in Firefox, which is still in there. Don't 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 install it. If you, uh, it's a fake of it. Basically, I'd call it a fake uh, scanner of a copy of BTZilla virus totals, good virus scanner, link scanner. <coughs> um, I mean, it's not exactly fake because it really it really does call up BTZilla and use their scanner. But but their uh, their site at onbrother.com is serving up malware. It served up a fake Firefox update. It took it kept taking me to Amazon.com. I'm sure they had uh, and as what I've seen in these scans, there was all kinds of Trojans in the browser cache of every machine that that add on browser was on. There's one right there, Mozilla email exploit, all kinds of stuff. I saw a bunch of Trojans, which they're long gone. I deleted them long ago. But this, okay, this is an older thing. This is not from that because this is from 11, 11, 17. I can see the date because I wrote it in the folder. Um, but this was, well, was it before? Yeah. Yeah, that would be, you know, that's a right around the time I installed that. I think about it. When was it, before Christmas or after Christmas that whenever Firefox went, to the new Firefox Quantum version, that's when I got that add-on browser.com add-on because I lost my VTZilla scanner, I lost all my add-ons, and I had to try to find new ones. And uh, 
you know, I thought it'd be safe since it was in there because that was their whole point of changing to, they were telling us how much safer it was going to be. You know, this is the only time I've ever had trouble with a malware trouble with, a, I've had lots of buggy add-ons, but no malware trouble with any add-ons from Firefox add-ons ever. Since they invented Firefox, you know, since they changed from, uh, from <clears throat> when they forked off of, uh, now I lost the name of the browser. I used to use it. Netscape, Netscape browser. When they forked off of Netscape browser, when Netscape, Netscape shut down, I started using Firefox because I wanted an alternative to, you know, Internet Explorer. <coughs> and, so anyway, um, that's my story. And so um, <coughs> I'm still a couple, I don't know how long it's been, about a month. I'm still trying to clean all this mess up. But so my, my backup drive, I kept backing up these systems so they wouldn't lose our personal files, you know, as I, like I just got through, I had all my stuff backed up and I've always been backing up my mom's stuff, but I made newer backups of it. I, was, I had recently done that. I had done that because I was rebuilding and upgrading her system. And so I backed up her for door 14 system, but it had, I think I put that, that, uh, I don't know if what I don't remember. Is did she have that uh, add-on browser.com add-on in her Fedora 14 system, or did I just put it in the Fedora 27 system? I know it was in there, and I had also using Firefox Sync. I had put it in the Dell 1525 laptop because I I set her up her whole system, you know, her whole files and email and everything, and her browser add-ons and her passwords, everything in the Dell 1525 laptop, so she could use it while I was rebuilding her system. Well, that's how that that got into that domain system. <clears throat> so in mine, I had luckily only put that browser add-on into my Lenovo Y5, so it didn't spread. I was using Sync, but not in all my systems. <clears throat> so and not like uh, sometimes I would sync the passwords, but not the uh, uh, browser add-ons because some systems couldn't handle five or ten ten browser add-ons. You know, they didn't have enough power to do that because it does use up resources. <coughs> That was my only reason I was doing that. You know. So anyway, that actually lucked out for me. I ended up with only one that's messed up that I've found so far. I have lots of old computers, and some are in the garage, and some are in here. And you know, I could run into it again. And I don't re just don't remember that it's in there. That I had let it be in there by the sink. I haven't turned on Firefox Sync again. I may not ever use it again. This is really called. You know, I knew it was potentially caused real problems, and it finally did. <clears throat> so it's just so convenient, but it, well, when you get hit, you get hit with on everything you got. You know, it could be in your phones too, and your tablets, uh, if you use sync in there too. So, um, yeah. So this one here, what's it? Eleven, eleven, seventeen. Uh, it's a email exploit, but it's in Firefox. You would think it would be in Thunderbird, you know, somewhere in Thunderbird email client, not in Firefox, but. It is. It was. I deleted it. Just happened to stop on that. So uh, I found it. I found all kinds of. Never seen ever seen so many Trojans. I've scanned Linux systems enough times. I've never seen so many Trojans in, you know, Firefox caches I have in these three systems that I've scanned. <clears throat> now, I scanned them. I just wanted. At first, I didn't. Uh, I thought, well, I don't want to scan all these things over and over because I'm going to reformat them anyway. But I realized, well, you going to have to scan them so that you can save the personal files, you know. So I did. So, um, long, it's a long ordeal. Long videos and long ordeal. So anyway, yeah, I'm ready to, uh, I'm, I'm just breathing a sigh of relief that I didn't, we didn't have a power glitch, you know, power go out for even a second or two would have shut this machine down in the middle of its scan. Ten days. <laughs> Cause I don't have, uh, well, I have a, I have a, a UPS down there, but it quit working years ago, and it's, it's still work. The power strip sub port portion of it works. I bought a new battery for it, thinking it was a battery, and it, it was something wrong with electronics. I never, so uh, don't have a UPS, you know, in here. <coughs> so. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I don't. I, I have an old one somebody gave me that, that runs on 24 volts, 
and I actually have it in my van out in the driveway with some, I have some, well, I have eight diesel truck batteries in there. I was one, I was really, uh, somebody gave them to me and they're huge. They're like about a hundred pounds each. Uh, and, uh, anyway, I was actually thinking I might make that thing kind of a hybrid, you know, put electric motors on it and stuff. I never was able to do it. You know, so. But anyway, that UPS is cooked up to two batteries in, in uh, series to make 24 volts. Uh, and uh, I used to run, I used to run computers out there and mess around and unplug it to my power, my extension cord sometimes just to see how long it would go and stuff like that. I uh, didn't have any batteries. I never did. Uh, it works. And it would work. It takes the same size of batteries as your your smaller. This is a bigger old old style UPS, and I just never did. Well, I really just didn't have the money to buy. You know, I can't bring those giant batteries in here and put them in the house. They're lead acid batteries that that you can open them up and you know spill the water out. And so I didn't have any. I just never really had the money to, and, and or the money and the inclination at the same time to buy some sealed batteries for those that thing and bring it in. But uh, it's probably what I really ought to do. I mean, there's abs- it's old, but it's nothing wrong with it. I thought it was broke for a long time. And I finally figured out <clears throat> it was had one good battery and one bad battery. Uh, I think it's what happened. But anyway, <clears throat> that's been so long that those little batteries are all dead. It's now no good anymore, any of them that I had. Because I had a one brand new battery that I bought for the cyber power, the one that's under the desk here. <clears throat> it just took one battery, <clears throat> one 12 volt battery. Okay, so um, I took, yeah. Okay, so I'm actually, I want to make sure, but I believe I can shut this thing down. Once it's down, it's down. This is a live system. Of course, once you close Claim AV, you lose all this. Uh, there might be a log, some log file somewhere you could look at, but th- uh, that wouldn't be as. And I did another scan before this one. I did. Uh, my uh, easy to boot drive, I scanned it. I put a bunch of files that I needed to have right, you know, the other day, on it. Then scanned it because that didn't take, you know, twenty minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, and then took it out and then scanned this whole big drive. And boy, I knew it would take a while, but but see, you can't. I know you can't really read any of this, but I clicked. Uh, if you want to scan everything in your system, including plug USB drives, click your home folder system folder and that'll automatically select every single other possible thing in your system now, if you just wanted to use your personal file your personal files and stuff then select uh, um, you know just your home folder I just thought of something I think I'm running this as uh, in super user mode I, I meant to but now I'm not sure doesn't say clam av super user up there at the top i thought it would <clears throat> because that way there's nothing you can't delete uh, no folders you can't scan now as encrypted zips you still can't scan you know encrypted files you can't scan them but inside of them but uh, but you can find out that they are encrypted and decide what to do with them but on my backup drive it wouldn't matter i don't need your privileges to delete anything on it but on the fedora 27 system uh, yeah, I didn't see nowhere in there it said skipped, can't scan that folder. So I don't think I must be running it in. <clears throat> oh, I know how to tell. If I ran it in root mode, then there should be a terminal window. Oh, well, there's not. Where did it go? I just hit uh, minimize, didn't I? It looks like it closed. Oh, it does that. It goes to. <laughs> Okay, so I think that I'm actually in regular user mode. I can't believe I forgot that. What I always do when I'm scanning in the Linux system that I really want to make sure the whole thing is clean is instead of opening it up from the regular, you know, apps menu, go go in a terminal window, type in SU for, to get super user privileges, and then type in your root password in the live system, you just type in SU and hit enter, and it'll give it to you. And then... Uh, <coughs> And then you, whatever, it doesn't matter what folder it's in. If you needed to delete it, you could. Of course, if, 
was in a folder that's under root privileges, it's probably going to break the system. But yeah, there wasn't anything. Uh, if there was folders it couldn't scan, well, actually, maybe it only tells you that during the scan. There's like a little dialogs that come up, pop up bars that come up and say, can't scan this folder and so on. Let's see. Events. I don't want to go there. Let's wait for it, I think. I want to go to virus browser. The events is probably the log, and it might tell you, like, yeah, there it is. Okay. I hadn't thought about that. Events, all types. Error found. Oh, okay. This could be some good information to know. And it tells you where, but you can't see the whole thing, so you're going to have to try to make that. Okay, there we go. I guess it didn't need to be that close in, but there's a lot of events. So I don't think I'll screen, uh, screenshot every one of them. Manual scan, oh, 32 gigabyte. Okay, this is all, everything that's been done since it's been running. You can search, okay. Um, trying to see, access, let's see. Denied, yeah. Access denied, okay. User bin cache, I'm scanning, I absolutely forgot and I scanned it. 10 days in regular user mode when I meant to do it in root mode. Because I don't have the terminal window. It would still be a terminal window open, <clears throat> even with you minimize the app. So that's one thing that you really, I mean, you don't want, you want to be really careful because you can absolutely destroy your system. But in this case where I'm actually going to reformat that for door 27, it would have been, it's what I wanted to do. Access denied. And it's all these even on user share and stuff like that. See, if you have a system you really do think is uh, infected, and which is really unlikely in Linux, but these days it's getting more and more likely. There's more and more stuff I read about that can hurt, run on Linux systems. And since this came from a browser add-on, uh, uh, well, I won't go into all that again, but I just was more worried about it. Actually, maybe what if it could run on a Linux system? <coughs> So there you go. There's a mistake I made. Uh, access denied, access denied, SYS kernel, so and so, so and so. It's funny what folders it can scan and what ones it can't. But uh, yeah, so those don't come, those do come up in a report. You got to go to events instead of it saying a scan log or something. It says events. This is, a, it, this is the scan log. Is what it is. So all the, since I did it in, uh, guess it would have taken any longer if it could have scanned all these that's a lot of stuff it couldn't go to <laughs> but it still wasn't my um, my drive you know um, if I type this what happens if I type USB I've already forgot Seagate that's what I was trying to say Seagate expansion drive yeah those are blue oh there we go what is this Oh. Oh, I see. So you get a quarantine, 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 quarantine. This is not access denied anymore because I changed my search terms to USB. So, but that that could be helpful to see that. Oh, you can read it when it's blue. You can't read it when it's green. So I'm going to make a screenshot of that. Okay. And uh, I'll let it be green too, just so I'll know. Now, but these other things, access denied, those are all on the system itself. The Fedora 27. And so it's not the end of the world. I can't get it to move. I think it's tired. It could be. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, I guess this is being such a long list, it's a bit much. Empty file. Yeah, that's off of the, uh, well, some of those are, this. oh, empty file. There's a lot of empty files on that backup drive. Um, let's 
Dios. Eh, let's go by event if I can. It says here, oh, vi it says virus found, heuristics broken, executable. It usually doesn't use that term virus found, but. Uh, the way to do it or not <laughs> oh heuristics broken and executable okay yeah this is the stuff I've already gone through I mean I knew I would have but I just thought what if I missed something oh well, boy I think being in the search mode and, and having so much in there already it's really a lot I'm done, so if I locked the thing up, I mean, I wouldn't like it. If I locked it up, it would bother me because then I'd know what went wrong. Why did it lock up? But okay, so uh, yeah, I really can't only page through here. It's really not working too good. So let me try something a little less, get a little, maybe with less in the window. Just Seagate, and let's see. And I'm going to go by file. That should go by the, you know, alphabetical order. It may be worse to keep changing that. <coughs> okay, that's not, yeah, that's a lot less stuff. So, empty file, empty file. Awful lot of empty files. Huh. Empty folders is one thing, but empty files, that's kind of odd. Oh, changes log. Yeah, that happens. And remember, you're backing up cache and logs and cache. They can be empty real easy. Those are all empty. Okay. Huh. Okay. Uh, oh, here. Yeah, let's look for... If I can type it, virus. Because that was the way it showed it in here. Now it won't let me type <coughs> for a while here. I so wish that I had... Uh, if I'd have tried to install on top of 10 days of virus scanning in a lot of system and then go ahead and try to install a remote desktop app, I would have, I might have, it might have crashed and never finished the scan. So I didn't want to risk that. And I didn't want to do it, you know, once it's done, I didn't want to do it for sure because it's been running for 10 days. So, uh, so I just didn't risk it. So the video is not good, but at least I'm describing it. All this stuff, I'll tell you what, I wish that somebody had told me all that before I learned it the hard way, one month and by month by month. Okay, so yeah, broken executables, and of course, this is everything the things that I've already dealt with. So it's just another way to look at it. So the way I, I'm doing, I'm using the search up here, so another way to look at it. So empty file. Well, it's showing everything. Oh, virus. I've typed in virus as my search term, and error found. That's weird. Why does it come up as a virus if it's an empty file? Lock files are usually are empty. A bunch of lock files. LOC dot LOC files. Lots and lots of empty files. But anyway, uh, <coughs> trying to think. Still doesn't work very good. I'm kind of figuring the more I do this, the uh, the more the more likely it is to actually lock up the system. Now, what I'm wondering, okay, there's an options here, and it's in the last day, too, so I guess that counts. Where's my... Trying to get back up to the top. Well, that's not going to matter. Anyway, I guess you can go... Yeah, you can go up to 365 days. Of course, it's only going to run in 10 days, but... Let's go 14 days. That's been running 10 days, so... Probably going to bring more stuff in the window. Why did you do that? I was there's an options deal over here. So it went back to last one day. There we go. Now it did it. There's more stuff. There's a couple more things in the top. What I was wondering is, oh, that's options. Oh, that's options for the scanner. What I was wondering is, can I save this log? But I don't see anything that says I can save the log. Well, I suppose if you. Oh, okay. 
I guess if I knew where the law, oh, it doesn't tell you where it's at, like it does in some quarantine and stuff. Yeah, this is just the normal options. Event logging. The only one that's not checked is application launch and shut. <clears throat> so I don't see anything that says save the log file. Of course, it's too much to actually pour through, but boy, it sure is a lot of information that could be very helpful. I don't know why I haven't caught on to using that events tab a lot. Well, I messed up. Uh, but in any other time, it would be a big mess up because if the system I was scanning, I wanted to keep and make clean, but the Fedora 27, I just want to, um, I'm going to reformat it as soon as I get done with this one, my, my Lenovo i5, I mean, and uh, reformat it with Fedora 28 like I have already done on my system. <coughs> so, um, and my Seagate backup drive, um, the only thing I saw denied was um, some of those odd files, nothing. Uh, all that stuff is on. Uh, it's every single file that it tried to scan that was denied. I'm not seeing anything on the Seagate. Can you do double search terms? No. Get nothing. But if I go back to doing Seagate, then uh, now it shows, you know, everything that's on the Seagate. Empty file. Yeah. So I'm not seeing things like, you know, access denied, can't delete. I didn't think it should be because it is one good thing about the way this drive is set up. It, it's a, it's an NTFS formatted NTFS, you know, like for Windows, but uh, can uh, no problem writing to it from Linux, and the, and you can write to it from Windows systems. And the way it's set up, I think it might be some different permissions than a regular Windows operating system because it doesn't matter what I write to it from, I don't have problems with the. Uh, file permissions, you know, fights with file permissions. And I have had that a lot in the past on and off. Some, uh, some of the Windows files would not let the Linux, uh, you know, write to it or whatever. Sometimes even open them up and the, and sometimes maybe even the other way around. Mostly it's, um, if I write something with a Windows operating system and then I try to, and then I copy to, uh, my regular hard drives. I say like for my virtual, Windows XP virtual machine, I copy it to my regular drive on my Linux system, and then it's it's uh, the permissions are locked, and I can't write to it or to a folder. Say I can't write to that folder or something. Got to open it back up in that in that uh, XP. The trick in XP was to that I learned was to share it. Uh, actually, because there wasn't any way to just say file permissions easily in the in the GUI anyway, so I would just right click in. Windows Explorer and say share with everybody, <laughs> like network share, and then it would let you write to it. So uh, Windows 7 is different. Uh, I didn't have a lot of trouble with that because I didn't really do it a lot. But I didn't run it. I never ran a virtual Windows 7 machine. I maybe booted it up, but I didn't install one because it's too many resources for my, my system to handle. But uh, okay, wow can't believe I just now noticed that after I'm completely done that I never did actually run that in uh, root mode but uh, <clears throat> I really thought I did I have to check and see maybe I'm wrong about what's happened okay SU that's how you would do it Type SU in the terminal window, then type KLAMAV, and then it opens up. Oh. Well, it looks exactly the same, but see, when I minimize it, you have that terminal window left behind. Now I have two AV icons, so one of them is going to be the one I'm, I just opened up, and the other one's going to be the, okay, yeah, that one's in the, in the uh, what you would call it, mode. So yeah, so I did, I'm pretty sure I forgot, must have, 
Oh, and it let me close it too. When I just hit X, it closed it. So when I minimize this one, the terminal, of course, is still there. But uh, see, that's how it would do when you close. Uh, it actually, when I closed it with the X, it let me that that time. Normally, in normal, when it's installed on your system, it won't ever close. You have to reboot to get it to go away. It'll keep running in the background, which maybe is good so you don't accidentally screw up and close it. I guess that would be a safety protocol. <laughs> so um, I did do that. I did run it in regular user mode, and I did not mean to. I meant to run it in root, root user. But most programs, when you run it in super user mode, it tells you, like it'll say, Play MAV super user mode or something, but it didn't. So, uh, but it worked okay, but it's still okay. And actually, all that stuff that got <laughs> access tonight would have just taken more time. So, now I'm as hungry as I can be. What time is it? I've got so much to do. It's 6 40, and I'm going to have to eat supper. I already ate a snack. My last break, I ate some nuts and a little bitty two bite chocolate thing. Hershey's. Not a kiss, but a chunk or whatever they call it. And I ate some cashews. And that held me until now. Whoops. Can't move that up and down. I don't care how. But if you got less in the window, like I search for USB and that brings up a lot, a lot of things with the USB in the, na in the name, you know, in the title, in the line somewhere. All oh, the green ones are quarantine. The red ones are virus found or error. Okay. And I don't see a way to save that event log <clears throat> but uh, it's all right never done it before that i remember because I, I don't remember really catching on to <laughs> it even be in there i knew there was a log but logs are always so long they're just too much to, for me to read through anyway so the screenshot if i screenshot the highlights that get in when i want to go back and find out what i did uh, that works pretty good for me so um yeah. Okay. So I think my USB drive is as clean as clean enough. Clean as uh, I don't think it would be uh, if I plug it into my any of my systems now. I won't be worried about it infecting them with win core. You know, like I think I would even feel okay plugging it into a Windows system now. I mean, uh, if it's just hiding in a folder somewhere, it's probably not going to get into the Windows system. But there are mal there is malware that can do that. It can crawl. It's a, they used to call anything that did that a worm. They don't use the term worm a lot anymore, but I don't hear it and read it. And, but uh, <coughs> that's what it is. It's a worm. It crawls around. So uh, I believe this is done. So I'm going to shut it down. Now see, it went away. It just. It, so if you're doing it in the live system, Remember not to hit that X because it does close it. It's not like in your, if it's installed. If you're used to running it installed on your system. I knew that the other day. I kept thinking, why can't? I was thinking I could close it in root mode but not in regular user. But what it is, you can close it in a live system by hitting the X. It's gone. But if you close it in your regular system, it won't close it. It'll just minimize it to the tray. <clears throat> so uh, I don't think there's... This is XFCE. It should have App Finder. I was wondering about the resources and stuff. What's left? Well, the number one thing I was really wanting to know is file system. How much space is there in the, uh, well, that says 5.5 gigabytes. Oh, what system is that? 5.5 gigabytes. Oh, that's not much, so that must be the, uh, must be the hard drive <clears throat> that must be the root yeah that would be the root file system see the absolute root but that's on the hard drive there's so many different icons down there I just clicked on one and then uh, 1.1 gigabyte volume that I believe is the li yeah, live user so that's your live system in Fedora. A lot of some of them are only 650 megabytes, but this is 1.1 gigabytes. So that's what I had to work with. Yeah, there's the kernels and stuff. Um, so that's how much. Oh, and then the free space is 733 megabytes. So, and uh, Clam AV, I don't really know how much it added. Uh, you know, 30 megabytes, 200. I don't know. <laughs> Probably around 30 to 50, something like that. Um. 
So you give it expansion drive. It's got three terabytes free on it. Oh, it's not near as much data that I scanned because when that thing was brand new, it was a, you know, they call it a five terabyte drive, but when it was brand new and empty, I had four and a half terabyte exactly. So if it's three terabytes space free, then four and a half. So it was a one and a half terabytes that took 10 days to scan. That's what I was meaning to check. I'm, sometimes different file managers report, especially, well, they report the sizes of drives differently, and the bigger the drive, the more off it'll be. So I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I could have been, I was just looking at it in Crusaders where I've been looking at it, and I probably just estimated, you know, the space left. I was looking at, I don't know, I just probably estimated it, but I don't think I estimated it so far off unless, yeah, I said two and a half to three terabyte, maybe I was thinking of the free space and getting it backwards, maybe. But, uh, let's see. 667 megabyte volume. There's a 667 oh gigabyte volume. Oh, now that is the no oh, the hard drive on the system. That would be the yeah. Oh yeah, because I got her a two terabyte hard drive. So that was her actual system, and the that's the live system. Seagate Anaconda. I don't know. It won't let you mount it anyway. I don't know why there's Anaconda on a. Oh, because of the live system. That's part of. The, that's the installer. So you could install this uh, Fedora Live Security if you wanted. One point four gigabyte. That's part of the live OS. Surely it doesn't have two gigabytes running in RAM. We'll go look at the RAM and see. I don't think so. I'm not sure how they manage that. I think it's some kind. Of, oh yeah, I think with these live systems. I remember reading about this years ago. They learned some really cool tricks over the years in Linux with file compression. So there is that much space to use in there, but they don't take up that much space in your RAM, you know. And uh, so see, that's the live OS right there. It could be duplicate entries, but see, one says 1.1 gigabyte and 1.4. That's probably 1.4 is probably the whole thing. 1.1 is... I can see the kernel and everything else in there. So that's kind of like the root of the file system. 1.4 is probably the root plus your home d live user, you know, stuff right here, which is not a whole lot. 0.4 gigabytes sounds about right. 54 gigabytes, that's, I think that will be the root of the uh, Leno. Uh, yeah, that would probably be the root, the root file system of the, Fedora 27, 1.3 terabytes. Oh, okay, now that's the actual home. Yeah, I'm not going to let you go in there, but uh, now that might be some of the stuff that I didn't get to scan since I did, did it as regular user because, see, I'm not able to just go, well, okay, I'm able to go into Theta, but not able to go into Dawn. But that's the uh, regular users on the Fedora 27 system. So, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure how well that, that drive, that, that 20 Fedora 27 got scanned. I mean, I'm not sure what it scanned and what it didn't, but that's not the big issue right now anyway. Okay, so I'm either learning or, for, or remember what I forgot every time I do something. Uh, so... Uh, some, they always say you learn something new every day. Well, I learn something new every 30 minutes because I forget every five minutes. <laughs> All right, so um, oh, what was I saying? I want to I want to look. I keep thinking I'm going to just absolutely get out of here, but I want to look. Uh, there's application. I want to look at this scrubber. Now, this is live security, so it's got all kinds of things on it. Install the hard drive, some securely erased disk, and then test disk. Test disk, I, I've never used those scrubbers and stuff, but test disk I've used quite a bit. That's a command line. Well, it does have a, I always said CLI was the ones that are like, like this. <laughs> I'll just open it so I can explain it. Uh, it's, it tells you what to do. It tells you select one for this or type this to do that. 
it doesn't have an actual wizard in it, but it, uh, and I'm not going to run it because it, what it is is to recover lost partitions or lost files on your hard drives. It's just a wonderful tool. I've used it for years. And it's, it, it, <clears throat> and you can use it without knowing all the commands. Like most command line apps, you can't, uh, you can't use them if you don't know the commands, you know. But, uh, I'm wanting. There's G parted. Oh yeah, G parted. Let's open up G parted. I've forgotten exactly what it was I was had in my head. I wanted to look at. <coughs> okay, so uh, Microsoft Reserved Partition. This is my uh, USB drive that I just scanned. 128 megabytes. And then the uh, NTFS portion where you can put your files is 4.55 terabytes in Gparted. And uh, then the uh, SDB is Fedora Live Security. Okay, this is getting to where I was going. 1.86 gigabytes. That's what it shows up. The full live system, virtual hard drive. You know, it's not actually on... Uh, one of these hard drives is 1.86 gigabytes. That's how much live. Oh, and I was going to look at the memory usage and see. And then here's the uh, Fedora 27. It's got a one gigabyte, uh, one run media. Oh, it says run media live user. Why does it say live user? Okay, so maybe I'm all wet and funny about that. XT4 run media live user one one gigabyte run media live user 621 gigabyte gigabyte I don't think it's naming it wrong because you're in a live system what those are it threw me off. I thought, okay, does it really write this the, the, the live system to your hard drive? But I've never seen one on any Linux distro that does that. It's not. It's just naming it differently uh, because you're in live user instead. Oh, okay, that's just where it's okay. That's its address. If you were in home, it would be run media theta. If you were you're running under theta or run media dawn. If you're running dawn, okay. So the location of where it was mounted or where you could mount it, it says unmount. It's already mounted. So the location of where it's mounted is is run media live user. Okay. Yeah. I had my stuff going. I was like, what, what, what? So anyway, the one gigabyte is the root partition. I think. Anyway, one's gonna be the root, one's gonna be the boot partition, and the other one, LVM two P V, that is where all your personal files and programs or most of your programs are <clears throat> so uh, and that's on the Fedora 27 system and I did not get to scan every file like all the root folders and all that junk and from looking at just now I could get into the theta but not dawn folders with from this live system so perhaps I was it only scanned into the theta folders I don't remember seeing any comeback this well there might not have been anything to show but I don't see any any feedback, you know, about Halt Theta or Dawn folders. <coughs> I just now realized that. Be careful, I'll break a hard drive or something. <coughs> I definitely don't want to break that Seagate expansion drive. That's my backup. But that NTFS has broken about three times. Uh, it was easy to fix. You just run the, uh, you got to be on a Windows system to do it, though. That can be a real problem for me. But you run the check disk and fix check disk fix commands in the terminal and you fix it. But uh, yeah, if it, 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 a test disk might be able to fix it. I hadn't had, ever had to get that desperate. I just used it tells you what to do when it happens. Uh, the errors do. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, well, I guess it told me. I don't know if it told me in uh, Linux or if I had to plug it into a Windows system, but. I might have been able to do it once from my, uh, I don't remember now, from my virtual Windows XP, my vir virtual virtual machine Windows XP in, inside of Linux. I don't know. If it sees it, it could probably do it, but if it can't see it, if it's, it, it 
wouldn't be able to do it. But anyway, uh, that's one draw, real big. I've seen lots of reviews before when I was looking for uh, these hard these uh, USB hard drives. The reason I went to USB drives because they're cheaper than regular desktop drives for the amount of you know same amount of space. And uh, <clears throat> but I saw that and I kind of had a hunch that was probably the problem they were having. Well, it worked one day and the next day it didn't, and that's what happens. It'll happen if you unplug it while it's been written to, or if you turn like me, I forget. I have it plugged into a power strip, and I'm ready to quit. Uh, you need to, I have to wait. On Linux especially, I have to wait until the system shut down and then turn off the power strip. If I get forget and get in a rush and turn off that power strip, that's when it can break that NTFS file system. And I've done pretty well after ha that happening three times. But if, if I had, uh, I originally thought I would, put that drive actually in my Lenovo i5 and reformat it, you know, with operating system for about a quarter of it and all the recipe backup and make it uh, the backup portion like ext4. And if anything, every time you boot in Linux, it will look at the, dri at the drives and your partitions, and if there's anything wrong, it will run, automatically run uh, the Linux version of check disk, you know, fixed disk. <coughs> I forget what it's called now, but... It sounds really similar when you look at the commands. It'll run it and fix it for you before it boots up. So, uh, and I'm still, but of course I've got, I forgot, I already forgot, I've already got a lot of backup on there now, and I have to have a place to put it before I could do that now. But, well, I could resize it. But no, it'd still be all, I guess I could still do it. It'd be kind of risky, though, but I could resize it down to whatever it is now. Put my operating system on there, ext4, what the rest of the space, and then move all the files over to that, and then grow that partition and get rid of the NTFS. That's a, could be risky. You could end up losing everything that way doing that. But um, I don't know. I may be sorry I kept using the NTFS. I would be if I lose everything and can't get it back. I have lost everything three times and got it back easily, but. Just because I knew how, I understood that and knew what to do, and I saw the errors and stuff. But uh, other people that don't get into that wouldn't know, you know. Let's see. I looked at the disk for uh, apps. Oh, system monitor. Okay, well, let's just go. System monitor. I know there's at least one. But it should be in here. Yeah, there's so many of these security apps on here. This is one. It's our task manager, F XFCE task manager. It'll tell you the basics. It won't tell you the RAM, though. I just saw that the other day. Oh, there it is, memory. I guess I was looking for the word RAM. I was in one. Well, I have it on my new system, and I couldn't find memory or RAM to, to save my life. I think this one's different. CPU, processes, memory, and swap. That is not the way that other one's laid out. And I looked in the settings and see like all the available stuff. It probably has memory on it, and I just didn't catch on. But can you organize it by the top users? Oh, there, right here. There we go. AVRT applet. That's probably the lower user. Screen saver. Oh, there it is, right there. The where the error was at. Okay. There's no number. Oh, I'm not looking in the right place. What's going on here? The percent's way over there. CPU, 1%. It's very low on the usage. Memory, 13%. Well, you can see that at all times, so I guess that's... Oh, okay. CPU, there we go. 1%, 0%. Okay, now, it's organized by top CPU users, but still, I guess that's what... I was looking in task, PID, RSS, CPU, and I didn't notice this part of it right here. So that's always right there. It doesn't change. CPU 1%, processes, memory 13%. So can't see. I like the ones where you can see exactly how much memory is being used and, you know, and all that. But uh, that's not much. Of course, I wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, I, I would, could have done that while it was scanning if I'd have thought. But... Uh, Let's see, let's go back to that app finder because it's definitely uh, too hard to system. See, that doesn't come up. 
info task manager okay I put use in there USC and I got task managers there's only one on here I don't think it has a system monitor or any of the others yeah because it's the XSCE it's not going to put anything else on there it is about the probably the most lightweight it seems to me that XSE is a little less lighter weight than LXDE or LMDE they're lightweight but I like the app funder so much that's one thing I put it on my mate desktops <laughs> but uh so uh, Fedora 28 if you if you want to run Fedora but you don't have um, you know a very powerful system then XFCE is the best desktop for that uh, otherwise if you if you got like well actually dual core I'm running Fedora 8 and I'm fixing to put Fedora 9 but Fedora 8 on that Dell 1525 laptop it has 3 gig of RAM and 2 dual core Intel processor and I did put Fedora 26 five or six on it and it just didn't run good uh it just with mate or even even with F xfce i wasn't happy with it so uh, i mean of course it, depending on what you're wanting i i, I do i want to be able to run do run obs studio and stuff like that and run well i want i want to be able to i used to always run thunderbird firefox crusader and system monitor all day long until i shut down but i can't do that anymore on any of the systems I have I might be able to on this one as long as it runs right it wasn't like I said it was acting kind of funny in Fedora 27 and that's why I went ahead and just scanned it again of course if it don't run any better I'll have to remember well you didn't actually scan every inch of it like you planned so but it's gonna be reformatted so <clears throat> and I'm not doing any I never type a password in it or anything like that if it had a key logger on it there's nothing to see there because I'm not typing any personal inf information in it Boy, it was hard going along. Remember, don't type a password in browser or anywhere. You know, don't do this, don't do that until I got my my, my system reformatted. So, um, just to be super safe. I, like I said, I never found any of those Trojans or anything anywhere in the system except for in Firefox Cache. That was the only place. And once when I was scanning one of them, I found some kind of map, Trojan or something in, in Thunderbird Cache. You thunderbird trash maybe uh, which is not surprising that's usually where you do find stuff <coughs> but uh, it's actually time to shut this thing down at 10, 10 days I've user yeah and XFCE you can either shut down or if you want to reboot you got to go to log out and then select reboot it's kind of weird I'm not I mean it's different from mate okay shut that down and get on back on my main machine and now that I've jabbered on for another 20 minutes or 30 minutes I'm really hungry so my throat's kind of raw I've been talking for hours now um, but I'm going to eat oh it is 8 o'clock I kept thinking oh now I, I don't guess I'll be working on the IBM she's sitting there waiting on me I got my my little shot going in my close-up of my CPU cooler but I don't I'm gonna <laughs> this is the only chance I'm gonna get to use it uh, I imagine it'll be move, everything will be moved by tomorrow but uh, that's what I'm anxious to get back to I want to get this thing fixed up one way or the other and uh, get it back running I, I am running on my backup drive and I mean my backup server that's in the garage it's been doing okay I haven't checked it and it's since earlier this today in the morning, I guess it's 102. Now I got up to 104 today at six, about 6:30. I looked up on my temperature deal up there, and it was 100. And, it was 100, and it's 102 right now. And uh, in Fort Worth, that's where that is. And I'm in Azel, so it's usually a little bit cooler there. But it was 104 at 6:30 p.m. around in there. Uh, and I was outside it was for about 20 minutes probably 30 minutes and it was 100 then and I started feeling it pretty quick and I was in, in the garage with fan going and stuff <clears throat> and I was looking around on my for parts looking for a fan for that thing and uh, since I mentioned it I'm gonna check my check my website make sure it's up still 
I'm not really worried about the machine not being able to be, you know, the, the much I've done it. I want, I've been, I was out there working on the car or something or the truck. I mean, I don't work on cars, my truck, I have a truck in a van. Well, I've pedaled with moms once in a while. She has a car anyway. Yeah. It's been up for 29 hours and 34 minutes with no problems. Good. And that's in this hot weather, but the, it's the router that I was worried about crapping out in the heat <clears throat> but it's doing okay but i do have a ceiling fan and a fan another big fan blowing right on the computers and stuff too really kind of the ceiling fan would be kind of blowing in the area of the router it's up on the shelf so that it can the signal can get past everything you know in that garage and through the house to this one's signal and uh the repeater of this d-link router and uh that's how it gets a signal so the if that if i lost my wi-fi then my even though that's a desktop plugged into the Ethernet ports, it's getting its internet from the Wi-Fi, so I would lose my server. But it's doing okay. And uh, anyway, I've seen, I've I've been out there in 103 degree weather working before last year, and uh, and it it had the computer on just so I could check the temperature and stuff. Really, play music sometimes, and. Uh, that was the only problem. Well, I finally figured out was that it's on that router. The music would play for 30 minutes or an hour, and then it would just crap, quit working. Well, it was that zone that about to, about to die. <laughs> it's been out there for years. I guess the heat and cold finally got to it. It was a good little old router. But anyway, um, Before I go on to another sidetrack and tell more stories, I better <laughs> quit looking at stuff. But yeah, the uh, fan. Oh, the fan. I did look up the fans. They're too expensive. I'll go into that when I get ready to go on the IBM. I did this morning look up fans and see what they cost. Uh, they weren't $5 or $8 to $15. So. so I looked around for, and I did not find another fan that would fit that. And uh, so I clean, I'll, I'll preview that. I, I sprayed the, the, the fan. I took that fan, took the little paper off, got to the, you know, to uncover the uh, bushing and the and the sh shaft for the fan. And I sprayed a little rust buster in there. And uh, <clears throat> But I was kind of worried that it would uh, eat up the plastic because it's pretty strong stuff. Some plastics, it will warp it. So I uh, let it sit there, you know, a minute. 30 seconds for a minute and then turn it over on a paper towel and let it drain. Then I got the, and, and, and well, then I turn it back over and then I got to think, well, you know, there might be still a bunch in there. And so I turned it back over again. I brought it in here and it stunk too much. So uh, that stuff is strong. It's PB blaster. I think it's the, what it is, the brand that I use. It's, it's the best brand. Uh, a brand makes a difference with those things. Uh, I think it's a white and white can with lots and lots of writing on it. I had to. I thought I'd get it and show it, but maybe if I remember, I will. But anyway, go into that when I <coughs> actually get back to work on that. <coughs> so now I can plug in my backup drive into my machine. It's plugged into the back of that machine, but I don't have a lucky backup setup or anything yet. I gotta. I want to try importing my settings. I saved them on the drive, and so importing into Lucky Backup. I got it installed in here now. And uh, I'll probably do that in the video and everything. And then I can plug it in and go back and have my backups. I've got quite a few videos, 10 or 15 videos now that haven't been backed up yet. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to go. And, and yeah, since it's 8 o'clock, I'd be silly to come back. And, once I get started, I don't quit for until I get to, a, you know, either super tired or get something finished, you know, so. Um, yeah, I don't think it'd be, I don't want to stay up late. I like getting up in the daytime, get back on the night shift like I was for a month there or two weeks, whatever it was. So uh, I'm watching, I'm kind of double checking my, make sure my stream was still good. I forgot to check it in quite a while, but, um, yeah, so I'll eat supper and, you know, get ready for bed and all that stuff. I'm not going to be in bed. Last night I got in bed at nine, but it's eight o'clock. So I ain't getting in bed at nine tonight. But I slept 12 hours last night. I was really tired from 
from dragging this computers around and doing all that yesterday. So pulling them out and doing this and doing that. And I went out in the garage. I don't know how many times digging out stuff. You know. All right. <clears throat> so I'll be back tomorrow unless something happens and I can't. <clears throat> all right. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.